In this video, I'm going to go over the new zoom and pan effects feature in Doodly. Now this feature is a little bit different from the camera panning transition that already exists, and I'll show you the differences. So let's get started. I've already created a simple scene that I'd like to animate with some camera movements. So we'll start full screen, we'll zoom in here, pan down here, and then finally zoom out to full screen once again. So to do that, you're going to go down into your timeline and find the zoom and pan section. Click the plus button and you'll notice a little FX section appears. Now you can adjust the duration of the camera movement by stretching it or shrinking it. In this case, I think probably about four seconds might be good. We'll find out <laughs> as we go. So to start making your adjustments, you're going to go ahead and click it and a new screen appears here. You'll notice you have a start section on the left and an end section on the right. You also have an unlock start button and a show preview button. Right now my start is locked and I want to keep it that way because it's fine exactly the way it is. My ending I want to adjust. So all I'm going to do is reframe it here to where I want the camera to end. So think of this as your camera's viewfinder. So this is where it's going to end. If we hit preview, we can take a look at that. So it just zooms right in to where I set it. It's a little, um, I don't like this black here on the left, so I'm just going to make a slight adjustment. Maybe make it a little smaller. Now let's preview that one more time. And that's better. Now here you can toggle between your start and end if you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And let's hit the actual preview button, see how that's starting to look. Okay, that's great. Now this camera will stay here until I tell it to do otherwise. So right now a lot of drawing is happening off camera. So we need to make our camera movement come in. So let's, let's let it hover there for about a second. And then we'll add another camera move. So in this case, I'm moving the timeline to where I want the new camera movement to come in. How about right there? And in this case, since I have a precise point, I want to do something different. Instead of hitting the plus button, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add panning and zooming. And you'll notice it appears right against the playhead here. So I'm going to go ahead and click into that and I'm going to adjust my camera movements. I like where it's starting. If I wanted to change that, I could change it by unlocking it, but I want it to stay right there. But the end, I want to be different. I want it to come right down here, so I'm just going to slide it down to where I want it to end. And again, I'm going to hit the preview button and take a peek. I'll do that one more time. Okay, so my timing's a little bit off, but I like the movement, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Apply. And I'm going to move this just a bit further to give the wonderful world of doodly time to be written out before the camera moves. So let's see if that's sufficient. That's pretty good. I think we want to hover it just a little bit longer. So I'm going to just move that down just a touch. And that should be fine. Let's just take one final preview to be sure. Yes, that's perfect. Okay, so in this final movement, I want it to happen right after 
the You Got This finishes up. So in this case, I am going to click the plus button and that's going to put my effects right next to the previous one. And now I'm going to go ahead and click into it and make my adjustments. Again, start is perfectly fine, so I'm not going to mess with it, but I would like my end. Oops, it's okay. No worries, we just stretch it out. I want my end to be full screen. I'm going to hit apply. We could preview if we'd like, so let's do that first. Okay, maybe I was premature in putting it right up against that. I do want to pause to allow sufficient time for the word to be drawn out. So I'm just going to, once again, move it and preview. Make sure the timing is how I like it. Okay, that's pretty good. I think maybe just a slight delay will be fine. Just a little bit further. Fast forward a bit here. Okay. Got this. Perfect. So I like how this scene turned out with the camera movements and the timing of the movements. Both are very easy to set up and adjust. Finally, before we wrap this up, I wanted to go over the difference between this new zoom in pan feature and the existing camera panning transition that you may already be familiar with. If you're not familiar with it, over here in video settings, you have a scene transition option. Right now I have it set to camera panning so that we can see the difference. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. You'll see I've already created a scene so we can see the transition between the two. So if I hit preview and fast forward a bit so we don't have to watch the entire thing, you'll notice the camera is going to pan and the new scene appears. You'll also notice my first scene is still visible. Camera panning is a transition between the scenes. So I've got two scenes right here. The camera moves between them. Zoom and pan effects take place within a single scene. So right here I have one scene and multiple effects. Another key difference is with camera panning transition, you get what you get. You can't control which way the camera moves and comes in. Sometimes it comes in from the left, sometimes it moves down to the bottom, sometimes it comes in from the right. You just get what you get with that. On the other hand, with the camera and pan effects on your scene, you can control exactly where the camera starts, where it ends, how fast it lasts, you can adjust where it comes in, and so forth. So there's a lot better control for you right there, and it's a great feature. So that's it for the zoom and pan effects. Thanks for watching.